NATO chief confirms North Korean troops engaged in war against Ukraine. What will first Putin to change the way he wages war and how China and India can help negotiate and to Putin's war in Ukraine? We will talk about this with Michael Scheitelman, a political strategist based in Kiev. Michael, let us see you and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Michael, North Korean soldiers um, transported to front line in lorries with civilian plates reported by Ukrainian intelligence intercept. Thousands of North Korean troops are now in Russia preparing to help Russian dictator Vladimir Putin's war of conquest in Ukraine. How do you think will participation of North Korean soldiers in war change situation at front? Because now we can only guess at how well equipped they are or how well trained they will be relative to battle hardened Ukrainian forces. Yeah, first, this bringing uh, troops in a civilian lorry is war crime, by the way. But okay, let's move to another to, to, to the question itself. Uh, first, we are not, uh, we don't know exactly. We have no information which kind of troops they bring. It could be just regular troops or some special forces or, for example, artillery or maybe they are officers, maybe they are just soldiers and we have no information. But uh, we have information that they are moving without any special equipment, as I understand. So if they are artillery soldiers, for example, so probably they will use the artillery which uh, North Korea supply to Russian forces. Uh, North Korea supplied to Russian forces also artillery and also the shells, half of the shells on the front line there, North Korean source. So, uh, we have minimal information. Uh, but the, I believe the question is, the main question is how they could be integrated in Russian, inside Russian forces. Because the Russians, they have about 3,000, as, as far as I understand, 3,000 North Korean troops. Uh, I can't believe they will use it as the special North Korean unit. Obviously, they, they will somehow separate these people between the Russian units. And the question is how to communicate with them, how to organize the communication between North Korean and Russians. Uh, we also saw some uh, videos from Russian troops from Russian front line, that they have something like lessons of North Korean language, Korean language, let's say, lessons of Korean language and books about Korean language. And it was rather fun for Russian forces because they just uh, start from scratch. We don't know any word in this language. Um, so as a, as a result, how it could influence, uh, I, I believe that this part of uh, North Korean army, these 3,000 troops, this is just something like test. This is not for real, uh, for real military usage, for real military usage in, uh, in front line. It looks like Mr. Putin and uh, his army, they just want to try if it is at all possible to integrate North Korean soldiers towards uh, Russian units. That's it. Mm -hmm. Michael, I see um, the Wall Street Journal said that, has reported, it is possible that, that North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un might have sent younger soldiers to Russia aged under 20 and without appropriate military training. So, as you said, we have um, not enough information about North Korean troops, but we will see. Um, later, a little bit. About um, NATO Secretary General confirms uh, presence of North Korean military in Kursk region today. And before that, we uh, have a um, statement. Uh, U.S. National Security Coordinator John Kirby said that North Korean troops presumably deployed to Kursk region, but unclear why. Quote, that said, we believe that is certainly possible, and I'll just uh, go so far as to say perhaps even likely that at least some of these North Korean troops could be deployed to the Kursk area. But in what capacity, for what purpose, that still remains unclear. It is so strange to hear from U.S. National Security Coordinator that he don't know why North Korean troops can deploy to Kursk region, isn't it? 
Why we get such reaction? How do you think? Well, because all the information uh, comes only from uh, satellite. So from satellite, we can see only that, okay, there is the troops. And we could see how they crossed the border, for example, from North Korea by train or, I don't know, by boat maybe. But uh, probably uh, European Union and uh, NATO and also White House, we don't have uh, any intelligence information from inside of Russian army till yet, yeah. Uh, that that fact why why we uh, move exactly towards uh, Kursk region, uh, it is connected to the Russian law, to the Russian legislation. The new Russian law and new Russian agreement with, uh, between Russia and North Korea, as uh, mentioned uh, Mr. Putin on his last press conference last week, uh, it is agreement about the defense. Not about participation in any war, but only in defense, in case that uh, enemy penetrated your territory. And our army, Ukrainian army, penetrated Russian territory only in Kursk district. So from formal point of view, from the point of view of Russian uh, legislation, uh, Russia could use these troops only inside Russian territory. So only inside Kursk region. Uh, it means by, by, this, uh, by this law. But it doesn't say anything, because uh, during this war, we don't see uh, Russia exactly follow its own legislation or exactly follow international legislation in this case. South Korea promised to take staged measures against North Korea and Russia through deepening military cooperation, and also called on North Korea to immediately withdraw its uh, troops from the Russian Federation. May South Korea transfer lethal weapons to Ukraine amid the deployment of North Korean soldiers to Russia. Currently, Seoul does not officially provide military aid to Ukraine. South Korea provides humanitarian and financial assistance now. It looks like South Korea take it seriously, more seriously than Pentagon or uh, our Western allies. Allies, sorry, allies. Uh, so... Um, South Korea uh, declared on, on also before uh, before this uh, before this fact of sending troops of North Korea sending troops. It was half a year ago. At the moment, then Russia and North Korea they uh, informed about this new agreement about this new defense agreement. So South Korea uh, declared that it uh, will send uh, ammunition and shells towards Ukraine officially. This is not, not officially, but officially. So uh, now we just follow this fact and we will do the next step, sending the shells and sending ammunition towards Ukraine. Till now, till this point, North Korea uh, only sent us financial help and humanitarian help. Last year, it is about $2.5 billion. The aid from uh, South Korea towards Ukraine. But uh, South Korea supplies, for example, ammunition and tanks towards Polish army. And Polish army afterwards sent us Polish own tanks. So it was non-official way to supply our army with a South Korean weapon. From formal point of view, it was not South Korean weapon. It was Polish weapon, not South Korean. But now, uh, South Korea, they are ready to take the next next step. And this is very important. Why this is very important? Because South Korea is the biggest product, uh, biggest producer of uh, uh, NATO standard uh, ammunition outside of NATO. Outside of NATO. Uh, North, uh, South Korea is on fifth or sixth place in the world in the production of uh, military, uh, military goods, but it is Second or third, in, 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 when we are speaking about NATO standards, after U.S. and uh, I believe after after Great Britain, after United Kingdom, so so they have a lot a lot of stuff which could help our army, uh, especially this is shells, artillery shells. In Russian army, uh, we used uh, till now this year 2024, we used 1.5 million artillery shells. 
uh, from North Korea. So if we receive the same amount from South Korea, it could balance the the uh, this balance of artillery on the front line. So that is very important. But uh, South Korea also not stop on that. They also are ready to send the personnel, uh, at least advisors, military advisors towards Ukraine. And now we see how important this fact is for Russia, because Russian uh, foreign ministry. Uh, we also did some. Uh, I can't. I, I don't know how to say that, but at least they published some notice about uh, South Korean participation in the war, and they said that uh, Russia will take steps against South Korea. So we are waiting for this help by South Korea. If we're talking about troops and also about weapons, as you said, also experts warn of a serious threat from the Union of Eurasian Dictatorship formed by Russia, China, Iran and North Korea. Specialists assert that this cooperation is of uh, considerable magnitude and may provoke neg negative consequences for the international order. One of the experts, Nicholas uh, Eberstad, in his article in the Washington po Post, noted that the loyalty of countries to one another in military affairs and arms supply is um, unprecedented and compares it to the Axis powers cooperation during World War II. This union of Eurasian dictatorship formed by Russia, China, Iran and North Korea, how dangerous it can be for the whole world? What are the consequences for Ukraine and its Western supporters? No, at this stage we could uh, put apart, a, 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 little, a little apart uh, China, because now what we see as facts is participation of Iran and North Korea in this Russian-Ukrainian war. And when I, when I mentioned the shells of North Korean shells, and so Russians, they also use Iranian shells. And from total artillery shells on front line, only 35% were Russian, from Russian sources, 50% from North Korean, and 15 from Iran. Also, Russia uses, as, as we know, the drones from, uh, from Iran and also missiles from Iran, and missiles from North Korea. So obviously North Korea and Iran, they take significant role in this war. But also they, they simultaneously they take some role in uh, uh, Middle East, in Middle East war, in the war of terrorist organizations uh, against Israel. Hamas and Hezbollah were financed by Iran and the Russian Federation. Uh, and also they are equipped by Iran and Russian Federation. Usually, when uh, world news agencies, they speak about Hezbollah, for example, they speak about, uh, about uh, this, like, Iranian organization. But uh, the uh, uh, Israel Defense Army, then they um, come to South Lebanon, they found the tunnels of uh, Hezbollah with a lot of Russian weapon, with a lot of Russian weapon. And also we have a fact that uh, Russian uh, intelligence services, they provide, provided information towards Hamas, and Hamas used this information for attacking Israel. So this uh, union, they not only enemies of Ukraine, they're also enemies of Israel simultaneously, and they are preparing the war against uh, South Korea. It doesn't start it, but... Okay, we believe that also of this union of three countries will participate in this war, in potential, I mean, potential war against North Korea. But then they put inside China, it is questionable. Now it is questionable. Because we are seeing that China, we are not ready to 100% uh, cooperate with Russia. We are not ready 50% cooperate with Russia because they not supply, uh, they are not openly supply any military equipment. And uh, Western intelligence services like CIA and Mi6, they not once said that there is no sign that uh, China supply anything, any uh, military, military, military goods to Russia. They can sell, sell something which could, use, could be used in military production, but not tanks, not shells, not something like that. And second, 
uh, China uh, is de facto participating participating in financial sanctions against Russia. China banks they don't agree to receive money from uh, Russia in many many positions, and also they not agree to receive uh, so-called Russian yuan. Uh, yuan is uh, Chinese money and. Chinese money, uh, which were used in uh, Russian uh, stock exchange, foreign stock exchange, were not particip- were not uh, receivable from from Russia towards China. So de facto, uh, China participates in the financial sanctions by US. So now China is rather choosing the side in this in this World War Three. Let's call that if China will choose the part uh, side of terrorist states, Iran, North Korea, and Russia. So this Eurasian Union, as you called it, will be very, very, very dangerous, obviously, and it will be dangerous for all the world. If China chooses our side, the side of uh, Western uh, countries, and not only Western, because South Korea and Japan is also on our side, so so vice versa, we will be the uh, the a strong side in this mm-hmm. war. Michael, if China choose our side, how Xi Jinping can help negotiate and to put in war in Ukraine? Uh, Xi Jinping till now is not a good negotiator. <laughs> the good negotiation, not really. Uh, his plan, so-called plan about peace in Ukraine, it is also not a plan. The first plan, which was published a year and a half ago, uh, and was called uh, Chinese position about Ukrainian crisis or something like that, and consisted of 12 points. Uh, it was not a plan because it didn't uh, didn't consider didn't uh, include any steps any steps what to do what we are doing with this plan, and the same situation was then China and Brazil they published a common plan. Again, six points, but without any practical steps. What we should do? This is like, okay, we wish to bring peace to Ukraine. That's it. But how to bring it, what to do, it is not obvious. But what China can do and what China, what China, uh, let's say, very close to do, is China can uh, stop supplying Uh, Russia by any goods, not only by directly speaking military goods. And we are close to that. We have a report, some reports, I can't say this is uh, trustable, very trustable reports, but some reports, but starting from November 1st, uh, China will stop to supply anything which is connected to military production towards Russia. And this is a huge step. This is a huge step because uh, Russians, they can't produce anything without China. They depend on uh, Chinese supply by 60-70% of any goods, I mean. Uh, so if uh, China, by some, by any way, really want to stop the war, it will be enough not to pay for oil towards Russia and not to supply any goods. And well, war will stop during one month, I believe. Mm. Michael, about Russia's ability to continue the war, the Washington Post has reported that the Kremlin's extensive spending on the war against Ukraine is pushing Russia's economy into overdrive, but it retains enough resources to sustain the war for another few years. The newspaper notes that heavy military spending, including high payments to the occupying military, has contributed to economic growth as well as high wages and inflation, as companies are forced to match military salaries to attract workers. Do you agree that Russia can afford to fund its war on Ukraine for several more years because of massive oil revenue and Western sanctions failures? as, um, for example, this, um, the Washington Post reported. You know, I read today this article from Washington Post, and they bring uh, exact facts about the inflation and about interest rate of Russian Central Bank and about salaries, etc., etc., etc. But these um, this ideas about what 
this, uh, what is the consequences of these facts, they brought it from, let's say, only one or two uh, opinions. Exactly this opinion about Russia is ready to stay on the same uh, bear economical balance a few years, it was the opinion of Mr. Inazemtsov, who is very trustable and very important economist, yeah, but he is only one person. This is not the opinion of uh, a scientific society, this is opinion of one person, uh, one economist. And as you know, in economy, economy is not mathematics and not physics. So any economist has his own or her own view on the same problem. From the same facts, they could bring the different uh, different opinion on the end. But what is the cons- consensus about that? First, that sanctions, on one hand, they work, and they bring Russia to this situation. And uh, uh, Washington Post uh, published the facts that, for example, 40% of federal budget next year will be used for the war, 40%. This is a huge, huge figure. And this figure is 8% of GDP of Russian Federation, 8%. And this is the only the published part, because in uh, Russian federal budget, they have also secret part, which is additional 30%, additional 30% of the budget. So then we compare this 40% for military, 30% is uh, closed points, it's about security or something. So only 30, uh, another 30%, it is the budget for all, all the social politics and all the, I know, teachers, doctors, medical, etc., and culture, etc., etc., so it is very difficult to stay with this budget. I, I, I remember that Soviet Union collapsed, collapsed. Then uh, military spending of Soviet Union were nine percent of GDP. And why I remember this fact till now, till uh, 2024, because Mr. Putin mentioned that in one of his speeches uh, this year. He mentioned that Soviet Union collapsed when its uh, military spending uh, were 9% of GDP. So now Russia have officially 8% of GDP, non-officially, when we uh, put together security and uh, military, so it will be about 11 or 12% of GDP. So Russia is it is in the same position. Uh, so it is difficult to say, to, to give any forecast. I'm not an economist to give this economical forecast. But on, the, on one hand, Sanctions work. On the other hand, and this is also the um, idea which I bring from Washington Post, not my own idea, that uh, there is not enough uh, Western sanctions on Russia because this price, $60 per barrel of Russian oil, it is too high now. And the next step which European Union could take is to decrease this uh, cap of $60 per barrel and to push the additional um, additional effort to crash Russian economy with this step. About what else mentioned Putin, yesterday Russian terrorists said on Sunday that the Russian Defense Ministry is working on various ways to respond if the United States and its Western allies approve long-range strikes by Ukraine deep into Russian territory with Western weapons. Uh, Putin told to Russian propagandist Pavel Zarubin that it was still too early to say how Russia would react to such a decision, but he said Moscow would have to respond. But how? We are waiting for decision to, um, uh, from our partners to uh, strike deep into Russian territory, but the first question, how, if uh, we're talking about that uh, propagandist Paulus Rubin uh, said uh, that it was still too early to say how Russia would react to such a decision, how do you think, how? Okay, this guy, Pavel Zarubin, he's not a real journalist. He's some guy who usually used by Putin to bring messages, to bring messages. Exactly when he want to bring some message, so he called this guy and organi- they organized something like uh, which is like uh, looks like interview. So obviously, Mr. Putin, when when he said that, 
he meant something certain, not any abstract answer for this decision, because any anybody know that any uh, any answer he could give. So I believe it was the Mr. Putin's uh, decision to uh, hit by missiles uh, Ukrainian uh, nuclear plants, nuclear ele- electrical plants. Yeah, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine also said about that last week and yesterday some uh, military specialists i don't remember who exactly but from uh, ukraine top commanders were also said that uh, we are fear that uh, russia will hit uh, nuclear plants inside ukraine this winter but also uh, we remember that only several weeks before the u.s presidential election putin changed uh, russia's nuclear doctrine that to intermediate the West in response to discussion of allowing long-range strikes against Russia. Uh, Michael, I also want to talk about BRICS, uh, because the annual BRICS summit took place in Kazan, Russia, on October 22nd to 24th, uh, gathering 36 world leaders. Nearly um, all um, BRICS member country leaders attended in person, except for Brazilian president Lula da Silva, who joined virtually due to a head injury. Can we say that Moscow's attempts to impose the idea of an allegedly alternative position of the so-called Global South on Russian aggression against Ukraine have failed once again? Yeah, BRICS, it looks like uh, the only thing we should not care about. Not not like Korean forces, which is very serious, and not like the Korean missiles and some other Russian military efforts, which are very serious. But this uh, BRICS looked like, you know, really some uh, club of pensioners who gather together to eat some beautiful food. That's it. Because all of these countries, there are 11 now. We started from four countries when we were a brick. And afterward, afterwards, they added uh, South Africa. It was 20 years ago, no, 10, 10 years ago, I don't remember. But last year, we added uh, six countries more, included uh, United Arab Emirates and Ethiopia and so Iran. So now this club is something which can't work, absolutely can't work. I read the final declaration of this BRICS meeting. And the final declaration of this uh, BRICS meeting uh, consists of uh, 134 points. 134, 134 points. That's unbelievable. You can't find anything <laughs> what continue, that consists of 134 points. It means that absolutely senseless and useless. Nobody could uh, read it de facto, yeah? And these points, they are, for example, for example, like point number 67. BRICS are very happy that India cares about the rights of big cats. Cats, yeah, really. And next point, for example, that uh, uh, BRICS is uh, very concerned about uh, what happens in Haiti Island, for example. And next point is something about artificial intelligence. And next point about uh, the weather on Sri Lanka, for example. So unbelievable. So this is unbelievable bullshit, all of these uh, BRICS. And they can't... Uh, they can't make any decision. They ju- these countries, they just can't make any common decision because they have different uh, economical uh, system. Part of them are uh, free, have free economy and part of them free government economy. They have different uh, authorities, like part of them are autocrats and part of them dictatorships and part of them are democracies. So they just can't do anything together. And the idea of Mr. Putin was to bring two things, de facto. One ideological is to to make from this union anti-American union, and it didn't work. Why? Because India are not ready to be anti-American because India is very close to, uh, ally of uh, United States and depends on the United States. 
and uh, United Emirates were uh, very close friends of uh, of US and the army consists of uh, American uh, military forces etc cetera, etc cetera. so we are not ready these countries are not ready to be anti-american next we, we are not ready to uh, to uh, to for example the question of being uh, new to 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 take our new members to BRICS. And there was a question about Turkey. And India said, no, 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 we are not ready to sit in Turkey in the same organization because Turkey, they are allies of Pakistan and, and India and Pakistan, they are in war now, in physical war now. So uh, it didn't work. And then the last is the idea of Mr. Putin to build independent financial system of BRICS as the anything which is opposite to US dollar and to Western system. So Mr. Putin brought to this meeting the idea, and not only idea, but banknotes of BRICS, fake, I mean, fake banknotes of BRICS. And uh, other representatives, they didn't support it by any way. They are not ready to be in different, uh, in separate financial system, separate from dollar, uh, which means to be under American sanctions. We are not ready to be under American sanctions uh, for helping Russian Federation and Iran. Michael, you remembered about good food, and Antonio Guterres seemed uh, very happy to be filmed on arrival at the BRICS summit in Kazan, posing in front of cameras to take a big bite of Chuck Chuck, and not even Chuck Chuck. Uh, in a statement, Ahead of Guterres' visit to Kazan, the Ukrainian foreign minister said that this is a wrong choice that does not advance the cause of peace. It only damages the UN's reputation. Also, Volodymyr Zelensky has rejected a visit to Ukraine by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres over his trip to Russia, a source in the presidential office has told the BBC. After attending a BRICS summit in the Russian city of Kazan this week, also Guterres had wanted to visit Kyiv. Your first reaction on this news, I mean, when Guterres came to the BRICS summit. Well, it also it ruined the idea of United Nations, because uh, Mr. Guterres, he is in charge of UN, so obviously he is in charge on International Criminal Court, which was established by UN. And Mr. Putin, he is uh, somebody who who is criminal by this court. He is, who is criminal, and who is uh, didn't appear against uh, didn't appear in this court. In time, so obviously Mr. Guterres could come to to Russia only in one, with one goal: to arrest Mr. Putin and to bring him to the Hague, to this International Criminal Court, and not to eat chak chak, which is Tatarian dessert, Tatarian food. Yeah, uh, in Kazan. So now it is very difficult for us, for Ukraine, to communicate with United Nations when we are knowing that. Um, the chairman of this organization de facto participate with Mr. Putin in, crim in this criminal case. He is now the partner of very uh, dangerous criminal Mr. Putin. And this is not the first, we, we, Ukraine, we are not the first country who has a problem with uh, Mr. Guterres. Last month, Israel proclaimed that it is bent to Mr. Guterres to come to Israel uh, because of uh, support, Mr. Guterres' support of uh, terrorist, terrorist organizations, uh, Hamas and Hezbollah. And now I just can uh, make a quote from, you know, Mr. Biden and from Ursula von der Leyen, chairman of European Commission. They said that Hamas, Hezbollah and Russian Federation, it is the same. And Mr. Guterres, he is also on the side of Hamas, Hezbollah and Russian Federation, so he is on the side of international terrorists. Michael, thank you for this interesting conversation. Thank you for supporting our country. Um, and to say that Michael Scheidelman, a political strategist based in Kiev, was with us today. Um, thank to our, thank you, uh, thanks for our audience. Subscribe on our YouTube channel, like this video, comment, and see you soon. Thank you.